Hello, welcome to my class. My name is Teacher Hura and in this video, we're going to learn about the Gay-Lussac law. Now, Gay-Lussac was one of the French chemists and physicists who was very notable in discovering that water contains two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. However, today we're going to look at one of his laws. The law we're going to look at states that when gases react, they do so in volumes that bear a simple ratio to one another and to the volumes of the products, if gaseous, provided that the temperature and pressure are kept constant. So this law is very important, especially when you're trying to look at gases and how they react and the volumes that are determined in different reactions. We're going to use a few examples to show you how to tackle questions on the gay lussac law. So let's head to the first one. This first example reads, in an experiment, 40 cubic centimeters of sulfur dioxide gas reacted completely with 20 cubic centimeters of oxygen to form sulfur 6 oxide gas. Determine the volume of sulfur 6 oxide formed. Now you can remember, according to the gay lussacs law, these volumes must be measured at the same temperature and pressure. So that is why we have these values right here in the brackets that are saying that the volumes are measured in at constant temperature and pressure. So how do you go about with this question? The very first thing that you need to do is to write the equation between sulfur four oxide and oxygen gas. And that is done like this. And I can see the equation is right there. If you don't know how to write these chemical equations, please check out my other videos that show you how to write and balance chemical equations. Now, according to gay lussacs law, when gases react, they do so in a simple ratio. In this case, the numbers that we use to balance the equations are the same ratios or volume ratios that these gases would react. So that means that two volumes of sulfur four oxide would react with one volume of oxygen to give two volumes of sulfur six oxide gas. So now we have been provided with some volumes in the question right here. So that means that uh, we have 40 cubic centimeters of sulfur four oxide gas and we have 20 cubic centimeters of oxygen gas. So now the question is to calculate the volume of sulfur six oxide. Now we'll use a simple ratio and of course you know very well since these ones are volume ratios we can put the full columns there. Just from the look of this you'll find that two volumes of sulfur four oxide and one volume of oxygen react to give two volumes of sulfur six oxide then it follows that the 40 cubic centimeters and the 20 cubic centimeters will completely react to give us the volume of sulfur 6 oxide. So either way, we can choose one of these two to calculate. So first, we'll get the volume ratios of sulfur 4 oxide and sulfur 6 oxide only. So we extract it from here. We find that this one is two volumes. Now I'll use a VOLS to abbreviate for volumes. And this one is also two volumes. Now in this case, we realize that uh, we need to now get the volume of sulfur six oxide. So 40 cubic centimeters is right here. So what volume will be here? Now here is another case of simple cross multiplication and we'll find that it is very easy. We'll have 40 centimeters cubed multiplied by two volumes divided by two volumes. So these ones will cross out and you end up with your answer as 40 centimeters cubed of sulfur six oxide gas. And that is how you calculate the volume of sulfur six oxide. This is a simple example. Let's get to another example that is going to help us expand our knowledge on these questions of gay lussac law. In this second example, we are provided with 30 cubic centimeters of carbon two oxide 
and 10 cubic centimeters of oxygen gas, they were put in a reaction chamber to form carbon four oxide. Find the volume of the excess reactant, temperature and pressure kept constant. Now, once again, we're going to start off from the equation and the values that we use to balance the equation, those coefficients are the ones that are going to provide with us the volume ratios. So let's start off. First step is to write the equation. Then the next thing is to get our volume ratios. The coefficients, these numbers before here, that have been used to balance these equations are the ones that are going also to give us the volume ratios. So that means here, two volumes of carbon four oxide are going to react with one volume of oxygen gas to give us two volumes of carbon four oxide. Now, the volumes that you have been provided with are 30 cubic centimeters of carbon two oxide and 10 cubic centimeters of oxygen gas. Now, the question is to determine the excess reactant. That means one of these reactants is in excess. So we have to determine that, but you don't know yet. So we shall use the volume ratios to check which one is in excess. So let us start with carbon two oxide. So the volume ratio between carbon two oxide and oxygen is two is to one. And we have been provided with 30 centimeters cubed of carbon two oxide. Now what this means is that how many cubic centimeters of oxygen would be required in this case. So once again, we'll do the cross multiplying and we have 30 centimeters cubed multiplied by one divided by two. We end up with 15 centimeters cubed. So that means that we need 15 centimeters cubed to be able to react completely with the 30 cubic centimeters cubed of carbon two oxide. However, we only have 10 cubic centimeters of the oxygen. So that means that carbon two oxide is in excess. Now, the next thing is to find what volume of carbon two oxide is in excess. So now we'll go on to the second step whereby we'll still have the volume ratios of carbon two oxide and oxygen as two and one. But this time, we are only going to be referring to the oxygen side. So we say we have got 10 cubic centimeters of oxygen. So the question is how many cubic centimeters of carbon two oxide are going to be required for this reaction? So once again, we'll cross multiply and have a two times 10 centimeters cubed divide by one, which is going to give us 20 centimeters cubed. So that means that out of the 30 centimeters cubed of carbon two oxide that we were provided with, only 20 cubic centimeters took part in the reaction. And that means that the excess reactant is going to be 30 cubic centimeters minus the 20 centimeters cubed to give us 10 cubic centimeters of carbon two oxide. And that is our final answer for this one. You can see it is very easy. All you need to remember is that the same numbers that we're using for balancing the equation, these coefficients right here, are the same ones that are going to give us the volume ratios for these reactions. I'm using VOL to represent volume. Now, if you learned something today, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And if this is the first time in this channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget the notification so that you will always get new videos whenever I post them. That is it for today. Have a good day. Bye.